recording and this I'm... meeting is being recorded <laughs> all right <laughs> um and then let's see hold on the annotations for the where's our captioning captions I'm always really bad at this so sorry um okay I could, if somebody could figure out how to turn on captioning that would be great um I do so here's our, our list today and thanks I'm guessing Enoch you added the badging bot so we can make sure we get to that and I do want to take a little bit of time to talk about chaos con um largely because since the last meeting it has come to our attention that it is being streamed and we have like 80 people that have signed up for the live stream so we need to to sort that out that was news to me <laughs> last Wednesday or Thursday um so the first thing is this is from the to-do group I just wanted to let people know that there appears to be a survey that's coming out um, from the to-do group I think this is a call at least from Anna if you would like to be um like connect with Hillary at LF uh, research to be part of putting together the survey you know kind of help like what questions need to be asked those kinds of things so we had done this before in the chaos group for the chaos community with uh the remember the Linux Foundation DEI survey that was run maybe like a year or two ago maybe a year ago so there were members of the chaos project that were helping um helping write that survey and so I just wanted to put this out there if anybody has an interest in participating you can just reach out directly to me and I can connect you with uh Hillary and um Anna yeah I know I know that um uh, I've spoken with Hillary directly about this and I think um some other folks have as well okay. um she sent a query to us last week was it last week okay. Colin, you were on that um yeah and just to provide a little bit of context um this is an ongoing survey that's been happening every year since 2018. So I think what they're looking for is not necessarily writing a whole bunch of new questions, but just refining things. Okay. I think they do try to keep the questions relatively stable so that they can Look over time. You know, compare them compare them against past years because this has been running for quite a long time. Okay, great. Um, so it sounds like, Sean, it sounds like you and Don, maybe a couple people at least have been reached out to. I saw Don on the email. I, I know I I responded that we'd be interested, we'll participate again. Okay. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll be honest. I wasn't planning on getting directly involved, but I, I have a lot of background because VMware sponsored this survey okay. um, for a number of years. All right, cool. Um, so maybe if you, I'll retract my reach out to me if you have an interest in participating, and I would say reach out to Sean if you have an interest in participating. So, and I will connect you with the email thread that I'm already on. <laughs> okay, great. Um, I did want to. The next one is just the Chaos 2023 blog post. I wrote this like really fast and so um Sean I did use some of your pictures I'll get you credit on cool. all of those well, I don't need credit why not I didn't take I, I didn't take the pictures well it's fine credit me don't credit me you took um, the pictures didn't you and yeah you I did but... <laughs> <laughs> all right so um basically the the way I'm starting to set this up is just around the two questions that we had remember we kind of had led it with a couple questions and I just did a uh, kind of a brief overview here and all that I was doing is pulling out a few things from the list that I tried to also um, kind of label just a, a few things from the list that I thought I personally wanted to highlight um, and so kind of coming out of this was I think the first one which was helping people communicate within their um organization or within their community about metrics so not us communicating to other people but necessarily within an organization like how do I effectively communicate say to managers how do I effectively communicate to teams and so there was a lot of kind of problems around these are kind of some of the the problems central place for metrics within an organization fragmentation can make it difficult 
um, can make the use of, of the metrics difficult. So there seems to be this kind of scale issue that I think people are looking to overcome. Um, Sophia, this did come up. I know that you have mentioned taxonomies before. <laughs> and so I'm starting to, and I've heard this too, maybe like in the metric model meeting, I, I kind of forget where, but this is like the third time this has come up, the word taxonomy. And so um, I don't, I'll be quite honest, I don't quite know what this would look like or <laughs> what this means. I, I have an idea. I would Wait. love it if somebody so could. And the way I the way I frame the metrics for people is the metrics are a taxonomy. They're just like a eighty metric times three pages long taxonomy, which is unusable. I, I think what people are asking for is that succinct definition of the things that we measure um, that are in, represented in depth in the metrics, but not not succinctly. We don't give people a succinct set of definitions of things. Okay. But I think those definitions exist. If if we can if we took them out of the metrics and put them into a shorter form representation, okay. Is I don't know what other right? people. I don't know what other people think, or if there's something entirely different meant by taxonomy. But that's how I take it. Um, if you wouldn't mind, I can also speak on this, and I I, I don't think Kevin is in the call. No, he's not today. I don't um, think. who's responsible for the website at the current moment? By the way, um, Elizabeth. Okay, cool. Um, so. Um, I made a request for WordPress taxonomies, uh, specifically the category and the tag setups for our blog posts, uh, wherein the categories would have a flat um, two, maybe three layer structure. And then the tags would connect the various different pages throughout the website with um, other related information. It's important for SEO, but what I've actually found more important is the fact that you can use the categories in order to make the website and by extension, the metrics more searchable in breadcrumbs because you're effectively tagging it based upon what you actually want it to uh, represent. So WordPress taxonomies would be super, super helpful. And one other thing that you could do is you could use CPT UI, which is a basic plugin for WordPress, to create your own taxonomies. And one of the recommended taxonomies I recommend is something that I would like to propose as metrics purpose. And the metrics purpose can just have a flat tag based structure. So it's not like hierarchical in any way, shape or form, but it allows us to tag the actual purpose and use of the metric. So when people are asking, hey, I need to record this specific thing in my community, but I have no idea how to go about it, they can ask a search bar a question, and it would come up with a metric that includes the metric purpose tag. Okay. I um, I don't, so yes, thank you. And there is something in here, I don't, I'm not going to be able to find it amongst the notes, but talks about kind of um bringing forward metrics and metrics models i think by purpose just exactly what you were talking about is one of the suggestions from folks so thank you for that yeah um sophia did you have i know that you <laughs> you don't have to say anything if you don't want to but <laughs> i mean i have a lot of thoughts on this but it's mostly that it just tends to be a pretty broad and hairy problem that actually did also come up in this sustainability forum two weeks ago too uh mm -hmm. in terms of like and while the group was focused on the topic of open source sustainability, within the first session, there was this bit, I want to say conflation, but this call that we have to talk about health distinct from sustainability. And that's the more actionable thing to look at versus sustainability. Um, and then within that, having a common language and taxonomy. So even in that community, there was sort of this pressure. Um, and I did hear of a couple of pieces of research that I want to follow up with that I think okay. are starting to attempt to do this. Um, I feel like the folks from the UC Davis team are looking at 90 project characteristics or something wild like that and trying to look at it. So I'm going to, I took that as an action to go track that piece down uh, or poke Vladimir for it because I think I, there's so many ways you could do this and I would love to at least build from what other people have started. So, uh, mm -hmm. I, yeah, so I, I feel like at a certain point we have to kind of pool and decide how to tackle this because it, it's too broad. So I, I, I don't want to ramble about it now, but um, 
yeah, I, it's too, okay. I have too many questions to move forward yet. Okay, fair enough. Thank you. Um, and then this is just, so basically this is a call. If people want to take a look at, at kind of the rough document that I've put together here, this doesn't have to be anything that is just mine. So the link is here. You're more than welcome to go over and take a look at this blog post that I'm starting to put together. If you are looking at the kind of the data, which is all of this stuff here and all of this stuff here. So just a full set of all the recorded comments and you're seeing something different, you know, or something you'd like to highlight in a post that you think would be great to share with other people, that's great. So um, this is pretty much straight text too. So this is not interpreted by me. Um, so feel free to add, please. Um, then we can post this. All right. Um, all right. So one of the things that we that kind of came out of uh, also last week, I've been kind of talking about this model of chaos and these collaborative communities, trying to help uh, folks, say, in for-profit OSPOs or university OSPOs or scientific software communities, um, better communicate with folks that are in their, in similar contexts in ways to use metrics that are meaningful in their particular context. This was a, a model that I had been kind of putting together and soliciting feedback over the week. Um, since since I have, I talked about this in a few different meetings, one was last week, one of the things that came up in the common working group was that um, we probably need uh, to revisit our governance documents or our, the ways we think about governance and the chaos project. So as we have folks that are, say, the community manager, we have folks that are helping uh, with you know, Chaos Africa and Chaos Asia Pacific, as we have in that model that I was showing below, folks that are like liaisons between these collaborative communities and the CAS project um, at large, um, people who are on the governing board, just a lot of people who have a lot of different roles. We probably need to think about governance in the project. And Don, I, I did put that you had kind of helped to um, agree to help start this, not finish it, but just kind of help orient uh, us on how to think about governance. Yeah, absolutely. I, I can definitely do that. Um, I work on a lot of governance for CNCF projects, for example. And I think that, you know, when we first defined the governance for this project, it was a couple of pieces of software and a governing board. And we've evolved so far beyond that. And, and what I would really like to see as a part of doing this governance work is also to put in place um, a little more structure to give people an idea of how they might move into leadership positions. So leading working groups, you know, leading some of these other areas and to put kind of a, a framework in place so that we can, you know, grow more people into various, the various leadership roles that we, that we have available to us at this, this point in the project. So I'll, I'll start working on some drafts and, and start getting feedback from people. That'd be great. Thanks, Don. Yeah. Um, does anybody want to help Don in that, at least starting out or at least kind of being part of that process? I I would be interested in helping out if only because it has something very critical to do with a piece of documentation that I want to build out um, for socially constructed. I don't know if that's okay, uh, but I would love to kind of help build that out as part of creating a community charter template. Yeah, that would be great. I'd love to have your help. Okay, thanks, Venya, and thanks, Don. All right, well, all right, that got <laughs> the documentation thing, and that got there was a lot added there while I while I was scrolling down, which is great. So this was just something that was kind of on my mind. Is we probably I'm not quite sure how, but need to think about our documentation, kind of like our governance <laughs> that is in the chaos project. It has evolved a lot over time, and I'm not sure. If anybody in working in open source over the years has ever seen a community do like an audit of documentation, it always seems like it's just kind of one document at a time, which is fine, um, but it seems slow and somewhat disconnected. So it's, I'm not sure what 
what people's thoughts are on that. Basically, we have the handbook. The handbook was written quite a while ago. It was sometimes written by folks who are no longer members of the chaos project. And it could use quite a bit of updating, just in terms of kind of like the governance document, like actually talking about the ways that we work, because those things have changed. So my first thought is that um, part of what's being done with the governance, the challenges that Don mentioned are, they, they parallel these documentation challenges. So as we go forward and define, you know, how this path to uh, leadership that Don mentioned, path to leadership is something that can be represented in how we describe how our community functions in the documentation. I think there's also use cases that people have when they come to us. And one of the use cases that I think is um, people come looking for a list of metrics um, related to different things. Um, so do we give them what they're looking for? Fair. I know, I know in my own navigation of our website, sometimes with, with the revision, I'm the wrong use case because I've been around chaos for so long, but I can't find things where they used to be. Somebody moved my cheese. Um, <laughs> but, but I think they're all there. I just don't have an objective. A set. I can't be objective about knowing if people who are new can find what they're looking for. Okay, I, this is it's a little bit different than what I was talking about. Mine was just like, Findability, yeah, that's a good word. That's exactly uh, what I was thinking. Mine was just like the content that's on the documents. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Assuming you can find them all, I feel right. like some of the content that's even on them is yeah not appropriate. I agree with that. Has anybody done like a documentation sprint? Yeah, in their in their communities, and you just like. So I, I have a template that I can provide that is basically a page auditor and a document auditor in one. Okay, that'd be great if you could drop that in here. Like, I'm not, part of me is like, I'm not sure how we would even organize something like that. How, I don't know. Anyway, this is, it's been on my mind. <laughs> like organize a sprint, like the auditor, the auditor might be like a tool. Is that, is, or is it like kind of helping with the process by which we would do it, Venya? So effectively what you do is you pull a site map, um, basically where it's just like, where is all of our documentation? Okay. Place it into a setup, and then you basically have in a Airtable database or something like that, you have mm -hmm. a checkboxes field, basically mm -hmm. a list, and you put down all of the things that need to be checked. You check them off, and then you categorize each of the checkboxes into a certain set of points. Okay. And like some things are more important to fix than others, right? So you categorize the checkboxes into points and then you give each page as a result of that checklist a score. And then once you've aligned and organized that score, you can yep. then say, these are our highest change okay. requirements. These are our lowest ones. And then you go through. So like one example is uh, if your documentation is more than two years out of date, uh, check off more than two years and that's okay. worth five points. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, okay. So yes, it is. It is helping the process quite a bit. Okay, cool. Um, could you drop that in the minutes? I would love to take a look at that. Sure. Or the, yeah, the minutes. Did you put it in the chat too? Um, Matt, I generally like the idea of a sprint, though, that would basically just have a small team doing this all at once so that no one's left going through and trying to do this by themselves, because I feel like it could take forever, slash, if we kind of do a focused effort that will hopefully move things along. Yeah, so, at least a little I'm, bit. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. I like I would I would sound to be helped to be part of the sprint just because it's like then it's more of like a time bound exercise versus like something that's more nebulous and difficult to tackle. Right. Well, maybe listening to what um, Venue was proposing, I mean, if we could get a map of our documentation and then a priority order of that, that would help kind of organize something like a sprint. <laughs> We'd be like, all right, the sprint is taking a, a taking on all of the. What level tens? Well, I don't know how high the levels go, but you know what I mean. Like we're gonna we're gonna address these over the course of the next three days, and we yeah. can ask questions as we need to. So that'd be great. 
Well, and, um, WordPress should be able to produce a content map for us. Okay. I just linked Site it map. in the chat. Your entire content yeah. map is right there. Yeah, it's a uh, oh. kind of the default thing the internet provides for you on any mm -hmm. standard platform. I guess here's the silly question. So we're focusing on just the website versus also GitHub. At the um, uh, <laughs> what do you think? What I mean, what do you think we should do, Sophia? I mean, GitHub is a, a, a separate. It's a it's a mess that's part of our world. Yeah. Well, I think we have to decide which one is the primary, and then once that's settled, then I think we tackle GitHub. Because it sounds like GitHub isn't our primary, or is it's, it? It's both. We honestly, it's a bit of both. It, like some some documents but, pulled from, but like I think to we, that point, oh go ahead, Sean. I would look to like some of the people who are actively engaged with open source, like every day, all day, like Don and, and Sophia, to say what should it be, like <laughs> what is what is the state of the art? What what do people prefer to engage with? Well, I think some of the I think the way I understood Sophia's question was like, are the the documents in GitHub or are they in WordPress is that? Well, it sounds like we have some cases of all of the above. Yes, we do. And so, so I I, a lot of the yeah. handbook comes from uh, GitHub. So what, what might be helpful is say taking this view of the site map and then also like I would take the next level is the beyond the site map, all where, where we have our documents and which ones are linked and which ones are independent. And then when we go through the exercise of rating all the things that need to be done, like I either we either scope it to have everything or just focus on the site. But I, I would feel like given that there's some interdependencies, I would assume we should look at both the site and at GitHub. Um, is there any other place that we're missing if those are our if two you, primary? If you use a community intelligence platform and just connect all of the platforms that you need uh, to it, then you can download a um, map from the community intelligence platform based upon your URLs or your links. You could also use an SEO feature, but I'm, I'm not sure you can crawl GitHub specifically. But yeah, I would just crawl it and first index it, just like the uh, WordPress sitemap, which is very easy, but uh, do a GitHub sitemap. Um, and then after you do that, once we have all of the places in one place, um, basically we put together a checklist and then we just start going through URLs. Okay, this is super helpful, thank you. Yeah, a spreadsheet of URLs would, uh, um, you know, I'll take okay. 10 pages today. I'm the, gonna... comms, the comms working group is already doing that, by the way. Um, oh, so you are? Doing the indexing at least because okay. In order for us to create the social media post set, we need to provide URLs for all of the landing pages, okay. the, all the metrics, the projects, stuff like that. So at least on the WordPress side, just by virtue of the fact that we're trying to put together a social media engine, we've already put together the oh. WordPress URL list. Okay, so, so maybe the GitHub side of things is what remains. Okay. Yeah. Okay, um, I, I'm gonna move on. I just, I do wanna, I think Enoch put this on, and so because I, I also we need to talk about ChaosCon a little bit too. So Enoch, do you want to talk a little bit about the badging bot downtime and urgency? Yeah, um, I, I didn't know what what right uh, meeting to put this on. I thought this is since totally this is the, the meeting. Yes. yes, the general meeting. I would get some insights here. So. Um, like I informed yesterday in the badging um, channel in Slack, that I just realized um, there was um, um, a downtime in the in the in the tool that delivers payload of the webhooks, the GitHub um, webhooks, which we use in the badging board to to trigger to trigger some commands, to trigger checklists and almost all the other automations. And it um, doesn't look like it's going to be up at least in a defined um, period of time. And I was trying to look at other options. We could um, have this running again because like I've seen, we're having a lot of applications more so from Linux foundations yeah. um, 
several events and I think it's necessary that um, for those that have applied and those that are applying can have their budgets as soon as possible. So the main issue is um, when, when, when what GitHub requires to have to have um, a URL that is secured and also that is static so that um, it delivers um, that kind of um, payload there um, to trigger the other automations. But for now, the only static um, URL that we had was for, for, the, for, for, for the tool that is down. And um, for the other tools that I try to check, they have dynamic URLs, which of course don't work with um, the GitHub setting. So I tried to look at the options we have at the moment, and I tried listing them down there to see whether there is um, some we can use. One, there is a tool that is called ng-rock. It gives you access to like uh, having a static URL that you can connect to your project without buying a domain, um, but it's a paid, but, but if you want to have like a static URL, it is a paid um, tool. And then two, I looked at creating um, a subdomain and then we can um, see a way of um, linking it up to already our hosted um, project on Digital Ocean, so that um, we can use that subdomain as our static URL. Or yes. three, yeah. use some of the deployments on chaos.community domain to see how we create like um, a link that we can separate aside for budging. And then three, you just buy a domain and use that because um, I explored all options and those are the four I would come up with at the moment. So, so if we buy a subdomain, Enoch, I, you know what to put on that page. Mm -hmm. So if, if you had a site that you could, like if you mm -hmm. had badging.community, you know what to put on that page. You know what to put on that page. Yeah, so um, what we would do is if we have a subdomain that is actually also secured, um, what we would do is just point it to the IP address of the digital ocean droplet that we have, and then we can be able to 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 link GitHub to that um, subdomain. Okay. Um, so I think. We either ask we ask the LF if they can create that subdomain for us and tell them where to point it. Or we do own chaos.io as well, and we we can create a subdomain for that in five minutes. Yeah. So what I was looking at um, having a subdomain maybe is because um, that doesn't need like um, I I don't know, but I thought that doesn't um in well, we don't incur costs for creating the subdomain since we already have the domain. And then also the option of having like a link, a separate um, dedicated page on coins.community also doesn't require costs, but the first and the last options would incur some costs in that. The, the cost I don't worry about. It's whatever's the, whatever's the best solution and the easiest solution. Yeah, so I, I think um, for option two and um, three are kind of, okay, option three is the hardest solution because it would need a lot of configurations. Option two is the second hardest because I do not know how we are maintaining the, the, the chaos.community domain um, in terms of- Bas Basically the, the Linux. Domain. The Linux Foundation owns that, and we just have to ask them to create a subdomain and tell them where to point it. Which I don't know how long that will take, but if it can take a short either. while, that would be. But then um, option one would be the easiest option to take on right now. And um, of course, then um, the, last, the, the last option is middle there. I do not know. It's not hard and not easy. It's just an easy um, option. Okay, so if the top one pay for NG Rock is probably the best path forward, at least at the moment. It's the fastest mm -hmm. one. Yeah. Why don't why don't you open a channel on Slack with me and Sean and we can get that taken care of? All right. My, my All right. biggest oh. concern with using something like like NG Rock is it it looks like a like a little tiny startup 
company. I, I just worry about some of these services that they tend to go away. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, I do we know anything about this this company? Do we know anything about the longevity of this particular service? Um, no. I mean, it, it seems to me I I generally tend to prefer something that we can control, like a subdomain of chaos.community, just because that, gives, that puts the control in our hands as opposed to putting the control in an unknown entity's hands. And, you know, could we combine but if it's, these? If it's something that's easy, just, if it's something that's easy to switch later and doesn't really matter, then maybe we just go for NVROC and go with that solution. But I just wanted to bring that up as a concern. Sean had a concern. Uh, well, no, not a concern, just a, an idea. I don't know if this is good or not, but we, we aim to use chaos.community, badging.chaos.community. Meanwhile, we can create a site like in five minutes at badging.chaos.io. Enoch, you just have to tell me what you need to be behind that, whether it's a WordPress site, whether it, um, you know, what kind of control you need to upload stuff. stuff. Okay. Um... Maybe we can have some minutes after the call to discuss the technicalities of that. Let's do it. Let's do it in Slack. I have a meeting with my TAs after the call. Yeah. All right. All right. Um, but um, to answer, I think it was Sophia or Donna. Donna. I do not. Donna. Um, um, so what happens is if we use Angrok is. Um, it, it's really not something that is going to be out in the public. It's just for our internal, just for our internal settings, and it's only visible to us. So um, using it doesn't expose us to doesn't expose us to anyone who doesn't have admin rights. Like they won't know that we're using NGROC. But of course, um, for professional issues, um, your point is so valid. Can we, I'm, I guess I'm a little bit confused, maybe because I did have some split attention as I'm putting together these resource templates for you. Um, is there a reason we can't just create a non-indexed private version of the website to put all that on? Um, Given that we're running out of time, I'm just going to yeah. make a suggestion that maybe we take this to and the Slack. Um, general Slack, Slack channel Slack so that channel. Uh, more people can participate. And Enoch, maybe if you can drop some links and provide some more technical information for us to look at, I think we'll be all better right. able to make some decisions. All right, so I'm not sure um, which, kind, which channel to general. put this goes on. You can okay. just put okay. it in general so enough people, to ensure that enough people see it. All right, all right. And, and we'll and um to that point too, just so you know, I mean, we'll figure it out and we support you in the work that you're doing. Yeah. So thank you for that. And we can I I, oh, I, right. I, I can get you connected as soon as we decide which path to take. All right, okay. thanks. Um I, I think I will um put the information there <coughs> as soon as um the meeting ends. Okay, great. Great, thank you. Um, thanks. And we are going to stop here just because we do need to talk about ChaosCon. So 10 minutes. So for those of you that are not going to stick around for ChaosCon discussion, no problem. It's good to have you here in the weekly meeting and we will see you around.